Hello, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Danny from Wild Weasel Designs. You can find us online at wildweasel.com or on our face group, Wild Weasel Design Co. Today we're going to talk about the color red as it relates to sublimation. So I've been seeing a lot of posts lately where people have a hard time getting their red colors to actually print red. Now you have to think about red in relation to color theory. Red is a primary color, so normally we don't have a problem. And for web design, of course you're using RBG, which stands for red, green, blue, to design in. It's what gives you your large spectrum of colors. So if we go here and look at this map, you see all of your colors here. You see your little picker tool. Normally when we're designing something for online publication or for a website, we can just go in here and pick whatever color we want to and it doesn't matter because your monitor will be able to display that color. But your printer works in a completely different fashion. So we'll get off that for a second so we can go and talk about this. So this is just a color chart that I found online when I googled shades of red hex codes. Now the reason that hex codes are so important is it's the language that your computer talks to your printer in. Since in normal printers, most of us are using Epson printers that we have converted, or even if you're using a sawgrass printer but you're using different color ink and not printing through their software, hex codes are going to be very important because they are what translate your colors from computer language into printer language. So printers print in CMYK, which stands for cyan, yellow, magenta, and key, which of course is black. So since red is a primary color, we are now having to make a red shade out of magenta and yellow and sometimes adding black or cyan depending on the shade that we want to use. This is why I always recommend that people have a design, an actual design software, something that's going to allow you to see right off the bat if the shade that you're printing in or the shade that you want to work with will actually translate correctly to your printer. What I mean by that is if you have a little color picker tool with a little nozzle here. If I were to go and be like, I wanna print this red, this looks like a great red for me. And I select it, we now see down here on the screen, it showed up and this is a good red because nothing showed up here. We can print this red and it will translate. When you're looking, now this is Photoshop, of course this is what I use 99% of the time because it is going to give me very accurate information about how I'm designing. It gives me so many options to do different things, to set different color profiles, all of that. And if you can see right down here, I am designing in the sRGB mode. It's what I design all of my designs in to make them universal no matter what software you're trying to print out of. So we see all of this information and a lot of this is not going to matter to us um, as far as designing, but there are, it is interesting to mention. So right here you have HSB. This is your hue, saturation, and brightness levels. It tells you a lot about your color. Of course you have your RGB, this lets you know in a web design factor what makes up that particular color that you see on the screen. You have LAB, which isn't something that we use for printers. It's more of an accurate color model if you're doing something for web design because it's how your eyes perceive the color instead of how the monitor shows it. And then down here, of course, very important, you have your CMYK, which is the information that this particular color code, 
as you see this is the one we picked and it's the same color code when it comes up this is the information that's going to get translated to your printer so your printer knows at what percentages it needs to release each color so that it can make that exact color so when I talk about gamut what does that mean we'll select this one and bring it up and now you see I have a little triangle up here that tells me it is out of gamut. Gamut is the range, RBG has a far larger range of colors than CMYK just because your eyes and your monitor can see a lot more colors than we can physically make with ink using just four colors. So I know if I were to go to try to print this red right here, candy, that it is not going to show up the way that it looks on my screen. And that is because I physically cannot get enough color or get the right combination of color to be able to make that color with my printer. If I were to click on this, which you can, watch the screen to see what it does. So you see we completely jumped and not only did we jump out of where we were, the position that we were on the screen, but we jumped into a new color itself because all of this changed. So we're no longer in the same like red family. We've started to go into more of a magenta or pinker family. And you can see that there is a variation on the screen of those two colors. So they're going to be different. So this bright, bright red that you saw is not what is going to print. It's going to print more like this. And your printer will automatically convert to the next available shade, but it might not exactly be the next available shade. You might have been able to get a closer color had you known the right hex code, but the printer will default to where it's comfortable for the program. So using a hex code will get you a lot closer to getting the color that you want instead of just using a color picker just because this number will never change. This number is set for this color in this color profile. Now when we use a color profile for our specific ink, like I myself am using Cosmos, so when I use my Cosmos profile in Photoshop, then I know that because of the way that I have my profile set up, this color is going to convert the information to my color, my Cosmos color profile and print the way that I want it to. So this is why I've gone ahead and made a color chart of my own. So this is our Wild Weasel Design Co. Red Sublimation Hex Code Color Chart. Quite a mouthful. So all of these colors here on the screen will be able to print the way that you see them. And like I said, red is going to be in the sublimation world a combination of magenta and yellow with tones of cyan for the purpley factor or key for the darkness. So you see, this was our original color that I set up. When we look at this, we're almost printing at a 100% magenta, 100% yellow. We've got a little bit of cyan thrown in there, but there's no, there's no black, there's no darkness to it. This is your most basic red that you will find. Then if you go down the line, you're adding a little bit of darkness, which is your black, and a little bit of the cyan, which is giving you that saturation. And also as you go down, you see that your numbers here are going to change because your colors are getting darker. So it's the levels of the colors that you're using are going to change with how dark your color is. But you see if I click on all of these, we're not getting that little pop-up arrow or error here at all. These are all within our color gamut, so all of these are good reds that we can print in. 
So I know no matter what I am designing, if I go in with my color picker and pick this red, it's going to print this red and I'm not going to have to worry about a variation if my color profile is set up correctly. Same thing with this. If I want this dark maroon color, it's going to print that way because we have the right levels and it is a color that can translate properly. This is why I do stress that design programs and sublimation are very important. Can you use Silhouette and get good results? Yes, but, and there's always a but, right? Silhouette is dependent upon hex codes and embedded color profiles. Now the embedded color profile, that's this information down here. So like I said, when I design, I design in the sRGB mode. So my colors are locked in, my prints are locked in with that color code so that when you buy the design and you go to print it and you bring it into Silhouette to print, then Silhouette, when it translates the information to the printer, knows these are the color codes that we have to translate because your printer is going to do all the work as far as translating RBG codes to CMYK codes. You don't have to design in CMYK. It's actually not recommended because then your printer is going to be working overtime because it will actually translate your CMYK codes back to RBG codes, back to CMYK codes because it's just the way that Epson printers read. So to save your printer some heartache and to save you some heartache from possibly getting colors that haven't translated correctly, then you want to make sure that your designs are designed in an RBG mode. Think about it this way. Have you ever gone on Google Translate, typed a phrase in English, translated it to something like Spanish, and then translated the Spanish phrase back to English? There's something lost in translation there. May just be a little thing, may just be one word, but for the most part, you're going to lose something in that translation because they're two different languages. It's the same thing with RBG and CMYK. There are two different languages. So it's why we want to give ourselves the biggest heads up and the biggest advantage when we are printing, that we are printing within the color gamut so that our printer can actually read it and that we are printing good colors that are repeatable colors. Now if I just went into the color picker and I just picked some random colors, these colors, they're all coming up, they're good, they're not in the gamut, you know, they don't have a gamut warning or anything like that. I can print any of those. But am I going to remember the next time that I go into design that this was the color that I wanted? Not necessarily, unless you make yourself a color chart, because being repeatable helps you in the long run. It helps make designing easier, it helps cut down on time, and it helps cut down on frustration, because you know that you're not going to be printing something unknown to you. you. The print is going to look completely different than what it looks like on your screen. So I'm going to release this color chart so that you guys can have it and play with it. I have printed out this color chart and pressed it on a piece of 100% polyester that I got from Walmart. I definitely recommend pressing color charts before you do anything else. I'm not going to get into it a lot here because I'm going to have another video on this, but if this is the first video from me that you're watching, I just want to impress upon you. I know everybody wants to get into sublimation. They want to print stuff. They see beautiful items or beautiful cups and they go, I can do that. I have a printer. Let me go. It's not that easy. You may get lucky, your first print may be great, you may have found a designer that's on point with their colors, but color charts will always save you. So that extra step of pressing that color chart to make sure that your colors are good and you know when I print this and press it, this is the color that I'm expecting, 
It's going to save you product. It's going to save you cost. It's going to save you a headache. So many things down the line. So that is why it's very important. And that's why I'm giving you this resource. Because I want you to know if I want a true red, this is the color code that I have to use for a true red. Now you can also just type this in here too. So you see if I bring this up right down here where it's got this hex tag mark, that's where I can type it in. So if I highlight this and go E, D, 1, C, 2, 4, boom, there's that color. Every time I type that hex code, I'm going to get the same color, which is why hex codes are very important. They're very repeatable. You know you're going to get similar results, or the same results, rather, every time. It's the same thing with any of these colors. If you know that you want a bright true red, that's the color that you go to. If you know you want an Alabama crimson, sorry Alabama fans, but I had to stutter on that one, I'm a Georgia girl. But if you want an Alabama crimson, right down here, this is going to be a really good Alabama crimson for you. If you want a watermelon red color, watermelons have a lot of pink in them. This one down here, this is going to be a really fun watermelon pink color. If you need an orange red, you've got something that's like a fire truck, which is more on the orange side than the red, but still has that hue in it. This guy right here is going to be a great fire truck color, depending on, you know, what fire trucks you're looking at or what you want. But you get the picture as far as the chart shows. These are all going to be very repeatable colors. So I would do this for any color that you're looking. If you've got, you know, if you want a blue chart or a green chart, because greens are the same way, because we don't have a green ink. So for greens, you're using cyan and yellow to print. And you may be getting a green that's more blue or a green that's more yellow. And by going through and making a color chart and pressing it, you're going to get repeatable results every single time. So I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions regarding the subject. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a new video. Have a great day.